The pitch to the right hander misses high with a fastball 1 and 0. You can hear the chant in the background. The 1 1. Ground ball, chopper to third, handled by White. Pumps, throws to first. Tiger fans, pack your bags. LSU is headed to Omaha. Tigers win, Tigers win, 8 3. For the first time since 2017, the Tigers a chance in the College World Series. Kentucky heads home to Lexington. Finishes up the season 40 and 21 for the Fighting Tigers of LSU. They move to 48 and 15. Players celebrate near third base. Coaching staff hugs and high fives in front of the dugout. Final tonight in nine innings. The Fighting Tigers of LSU heading to Omaha in the 2023 College World Series, defeating Kentucky here in the Super Regional by a final of eight to three on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Like I said, I think there's just a little spark that hit. Um, you know, when we lost the tournament, um, you know, we just really got together and, you know, it's told everybody it's, it's time to go. And, um, you know, I think that we could definitely see the shift in, in our approaches and our mental um, approaches. So it's been, it's been great. I know for me, I just, right when I got here, I felt welcome and uh, felt at home. And I, the others, I'm sure, feel that way too. And I think that's just what we're able to do. And, uh, yeah, help us win. There's been a lot of blood, sweat, and tears put in the bucket over the 700 whatever days we've been here, and uh, they're champions. And um, really excited to go to Omaha and chase the national championship with them. And um, if they are in character, um, we're gonna have a great chance to do that. What we're doing right now is uh, very, very good and very um, special, and you know, we're gonna carry it forward um, in Omaha. Exclusive presentation of the LSU Sports Radio Network. Welcome to the greatest show on dirt. Day two of the 2023 College World Series. And with three great games here in Omaha so far, we're poised for yet a fourth. It's the Tennessee Volunteers taking on your Fighting Tigers of LSU. You, you're going to watch a big leaguer tonight. I mean, a guy that honestly you can fly to Yankee Stadium tonight. In this case, Boston, and he can start Sunday Night Baseball tomorrow. Pitch number seven to Oda, and he strikes out on 102. Buckle up, kiddos. This one might be kind of fun. You got a Tennessee who is not going to be intimidated. Skeens delivers. Line to foul right at Tommy White. 101 coming in. What do you got? About 112 going yeah. out? At least. Up this first. Strike three calls. 101 at the knees. For Paul Skeens, who goes back to work in the second. And gets his third strikeout. Fan Zane dead in the third baseman in the five spot. 15 tonight. Beach ball one. Breaking ball again for strikeout four. Merrick goes down via the punch out. Two gone. Throwing one fastball in the inning. He struck two guys out. Payoff pitch. Yes! It's here yesterday as well. This is sky to left field by Dugas. See ya! LSU strikes first. Well, they don't give number eight to just anybody in LSU. They give it to the leader. And Gavin Dugas has been coming up with monster hits for LSU his entire career. How about a hanging sinker that is launched into the left field seat? His 0-2 is a fastball at 100 for strikeout number six. That's one the athletic department will let you put on the expansion court. They don't mind that one. Fix the wall. Now Lindsay's 1-2 to Morgan. On the ground, off the glove of Lindsay. Gets the out and run scores. Trying to handle the comebacker. Josh Pearson taps home and it's two zip LSU. It's an early May where he hits six. And he slugs this one to left and Josh Pearson roams into a sliding catch. Round number two. One, two, two. Runs away, run around the moon. Travinsky's throw. Got him. In Travinsky cuts down Hunter Ensley to close out the top of the fourth. Lindsay's ready with an 0-2. High pass mark. More hard contact for Braden Jobert. And Dugas first to third. The throw to second. Does not get him. Kept saying we came together to get here. Strike three calls. 100 on the black and a smirk for 
from Paul Skeens, his 8th K. I mean, Skeens is good enough on his own. Skeens 2-2. Two, two. Cut on and miss. 100. Well, this guy's got a few knocks off him, but Jordan tops in with a throw. Trey Morgan the stretch to get Hunter Ensley. Two outs, Travinsky board, and that's hit hard toward the gap in right center with Ensley on the move, and it's off the base of the wall. Travinsky scores. Joe Bear takes for third. Headlong dive with a run scoring triple. The center field wall. This is a hot shot off the glove of a home, and it's 4 nothing. LSU in the sixth. Fastball down at 99. 10 Ks for Skeens, two away. 1-2 from Skeens is cut on and miss. 99 from Paul Skeens, glancing back to check his velo with strikeout number 11. For a likely top three pick. Champs one in the shallow right, and Scott made a diving bid, but it drops down. And Cruz has a leadoff double. 2-0. Tommy Tank slides one to left center, and it drops down. With those two lineups, back to make the catch. Cruz in the clean whites tags. 2-2. Two -two. Strike three called at 100. 200 strikeouts this season for Paul Skeens and a dozen of them tonight. His journey has taken him here to Omaha and on this stage, he was a star again tonight. Ensley, you, you, you know the report, 67% breaking balls. Like you, you gotta go up there with that in the front of your mind. First pitch swinging there, Ensley to deep center and Cruz is back and that ball is off the top of the wall. And God! Skeens out. Ensley strikes. Hey, now. Bouncing ball chopped up the middle. Jordan Thompson had to wait on it. He gets rid of it. To review at first. The call of the field will be overturned to say. Christian Moore takes. Yeah. Cooper's 0-2. 1-2. 1-2. Strike three calls. Jay Johnson said to us this morning he's playing the best baseball of his career right now. He said when he goes, we are really hard to beat. He's been going in this one. That's down one and two. He's had stretches of his career where he can literally carry the he pointed back to the Vanderbilt series last year where he just was red hot. And you've seen that tonight. Like he, the, 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 the talent is immense. And he pulls this one on to
get off to a great start here in Omaha. Ole Miss hard to outdo the hype. I, I would say that he did. He was that electric tonight, and the LSU offense just continues to be a problem that nobody really has the answers for. Our team was locked in from the first pitch. Uh, we talked a lot about just focusing on execution, and uh, they did that really, really well. And this time of year, you win these games against these elite teams when um, great players play great. And that was certainly the case with Paul from the mound tonight, Braden, Gavin from the batter's box. Uh, I thought it was a really solid game. I thought we played clean baseball, and our, uh, our guys were guys, and that's what it takes to win games. I'm very proud of my team, very proud of Paul, and very proud of Gavin. Um, you know, we all work really, really hard, and it's for these moments. So, um, you know, I'm just happy to be a part of it. Coach told us whenever we um, won the Super Regional, they asked him to do everything you expect times four, uh, and he was right about it, and I'd say times ten. Um, but I'm, it was awesome just to enjoy that first game, and we're ready for the next one. Paul, what advice would you give to kids facing a pitcher like you? Oh, man. I'll be ready for the fastball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know what else to say. That's pretty much it. I mean, I love the Tennessee fans because Sandy's <laughs> cheating. <laughs> Sandy's on juice. Keep digging, Tennessee. I get it, man. I know that y'all have been down for a long, long time. It's been a minute since y'all have wanted anything. When's the last time Tennessee won anything worth really gloating about? Just really nothing to celebrate on Rocky Top. I mean, I, I, I get the loser's mentality that has just soaked Knoxville up for a long time. But it's a bad look claiming that he's cheating after two times and facing him and you can't what? hit him. I mean, really. Yeah, just hit the Find something thought. else. All right, y'all, it is game day at the College World Series. LSU Wake Forest tonight at 6 o'clock. They're the number one national seed. They're number one in all the polls. Hit 308 as a team. They have 130 homers as a team. They have a bunch of arms that can really pitch it. They are just really good. You know, I know we've talked about it a ton, but I, I don't see a path for LSU out of the loser's bracket. So, um, obviously, if you, if you lose today, uh, I don't know that there's really a path for LSU. Spring a miss and a start for Hart. Pretty stout wind. Roll over to the third baseman, Wilkin. He fields and fires. One and two. Fun ball, strike three, and he knew it. And it stays put. Swing and a miss. 97. We've seen some velocity this week. The guy that LSU wants up here. One long rolls at the second base. Johnson, Houston, double play. New York City and helping out young kids in baseball. It's one, two. One. Over the knees, called strike three. Great start, Todd Floyd. Runner goes on the block, throw down and to the left, and he's in. Good read by Josh Pearson to pick the bag, his second steal. strikeout and will not get it. A walk to the leadoff man for Floyd. Yes! And that one is sent past the first baseman and a big, big break. Three balls, one strike. Bennett. Ball four. Three-one. 
should get a good one here. Wow, ball four. And Johnson calls on Hurd to pitch in a massive spot. Fastball right back up the middle. That gets through. Here comes Hawk. Bennett breaks on. The throw comes in. They get one run on a Wilkin RBI. It's now two to one. And that was smashed. Slow roller up the middle. It is fielded and then fired to first double play. What an effort by Thompson. The run comes in to tie the game. Bases loaded 2-2 game. Swing and a miss and a huge, huge hold by Hurd. Out of Duxbury, Massachusetts, 6 2 2 The senior is Cole Rowland. He does on the 1-2. See you later. Parts on a 1-2. Yes, sir. Back to back punch outs and we're flipping baseballs, gloves. Two and one in the air. Caught. Chased one. Third throw on slider down and they got Wilkins. Schedule they didn't. Ripped into right. Watch out. It's a second base. It gets to the wall. suffer their first loss in the College World Series. Ty, you had one of your best outings all year, um, biggest stage. I mean, what are kind of your emotions since you ended up losing this game? I mean, I mean my, our main focus is win and stuff. I know I hate that we lost, but at the same time, I know that tomorrow we're going to come back hotter than ever, and we got all the motivation in the world to win tomorrow. As a team, like I said, we go out there and play together like it's our last time playing the game, so nothing changes. We're in a different position now, obviously, but our mental is still great. Um, we're going to show out tomorrow. It'd be very easy to uh, crawl into a hole with disappointment. That was a great college baseball game that we came up on the short end of the stick. But I shared with them two things. Number one, I've had a team in this position before. Lost a 1-0 heartbreaker to Oklahoma State and won three consecutive games to play for a national championship. Then the very next year, this program did the same thing. And they beat probably one of the best teams in modern college baseball history twice to get that opportunity and I have all the faith in the world and our team that we can do that so let's stick to what we do what's the pitching plan for tomorrow and, and then going forward knowing you have three in a row yeah 
we have nine guys available to pitch tomorrow, and we'll choose one of them, and he'll get guys out for as long as he can, and then we'll go to the next guy, 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 we'll the next guy until we figure out how to get 27 outs against a really good team. My point about this all along has been, you know, if LSU's going to advance, they got to do it through the winner's bracket, and I don't see a path for it through the loser's bracket, and uh, I don't think LSU beats Tennessee tomorrow. The bottom line is you don't have Floyd, Hurd, Skeens available, and so you're going to have Drew Beam against, I mean, who do you go to to save your season? Who do you trust the most? Riley Cooper, Gavin Gidry, one of those two. And even if you manage to win that, you got to come back and beat Wake Forest twice, so... Uh, the reality of what we talked about for so long is now upon us, so you can see why the task is so daunting. It's been fun. It's really fun. Um, you know, obviously, you can't complain when you run through a regional and a super regional and you're outscoring your opponents by 59, up 16 in a postseason game. And I'm not going to complain about that. We both know what's going to happen when he comes in the game's over. And I go out there, and I'm like, how, how can we lose? Who can beat us? You know, it, it seems, you know, pretty much impossible. LSU and Tennessee this afternoon. Huge one for the Tigers. It's going to be a big challenge. Without question, it's going to be a challenge. It's a daunting task at this point for LSU. We all know that. Very, very steep road to climb here. Your chances of winning a national championship were really hit yesterday. Really hit. You're going to see Drew Beam to start this game. Um, Beam is among the best number threes in college baseball. LSU seems like they are uh, just about cashed up on arms. And it's going to be a situation where you need somebody to step up. Right? You had somebody step up in 2017, and that's how you got to the championship series. You're going to need that again. They need the offense to be clicking at a rate where they were scoring six, seven, nine runs a game. Right? I mean, this is the best lineup in college baseball, and now's the time where you have to earn that. It's why you are here. It is why you are the team that you are. It is why you had a one next to your name until May the 8th. It's the reason why you are a national seed. You are the best offense that has the capabilities to go out there and put eight runs on anybody. Well, you got to do that today. Massive ovation from his teammates, given what he's 
done tonight. He is working with a great deal of pace, and he's ready there. He sticks the landing. It's a good pitch. I got him leading two more strikeouts, and Ackenhausen is seeing innings he's never seen before. 2-2. Two -two. That's in there. That's a strike at two down. And a squibber to first with all sorts of spin on it, but it works beautifully for LSU. Cooper is beside himself. After straining the bases loaded and reached on an arrow. Look out! On a go. Look out, that one gets by. That's going to bring the run in from third. Be careful playing shallow. Double play ball here. Thompson, Dugas, and a scoop at first by Morgan. Here's Cruz. 0-2, oh, 1-2. Mm, that one was hung. It just launches it in the air to right. Going back. Get Christian Scott to the track to the wall. This baby's gone. strikes, saw some things in the matchup that I liked, saw some things in previous games here just throughout the tournament that I liked, that I thought he could be effective. The thought really was three innings, 60 pitches. Um, my initial target was 12 hitters, and um, you know, obviously accomplished a lot more than that. Nate, when exactly did you find out you were starting today, and what was your reaction? Um, coach texted me at 8.56. I didn't respond until 11.10. I was sleeping in a little bit, so I think I just texted him. I'll give it all I got. I can confirm that time lapse. <laughs> <laughs> what do you take away from that first game against Wake that, that you might be able to capitalize on tomorrow? Yeah, they're legit. Of the three times I've been here, this is the best field. There's the most good players and good pitchers of the times I've been in the College World Series. They have their way, and they do their, their, they do their thing really, really well. So. Um, wouldn't want to be playing anybody else. You know, I feel like um, the four best teams in the country are the four best teams still playing in Omaha right now. We're ready for first pitch. Anticipated tonight, the rematch between Wake Forest and LSU. How about the starting pitching? Well, yesterday going into the matchup with Tennessee, that was the biggest question on the mind of Tiger fans everywhere. Same deal today. Jay Johnson has decided to counter with lefty Javen Coleman. Coleman will make his eighth appearance of the year and his fourth start. Tiger's looking for him to be sharp today, but plenty of help and plenty of guys down there in the bullpen, uh, including Griffin Herring and many others. LSU needs to defeat Wake Forest twice. Tigers have a very clear path. They know exactly what they have to do. It won't be easy, but certainly Coach Jay Johnson believes his club can accomplish it.
Griffin Herring is going to come in. And backs against the wall right now for the LSU Tigers. Started in last round. Two or three early in the count. And into center, and it's a blooper that falls. For Costello, who squared, he got a hit by that pitch on his knee. Your first base. That was a great idea by Costello. He got the right center. And this is a rollover. Could be two. Dugas, no, he just flipped it slowly.
the final tonight. They hand Wake Forest their first loss here in the College World Series. Demon Deacons and Tigers now one and one in their two meetings. The winner tomorrow moves on to the championship series. Game one on Saturday to face the Florida Gators. We got a pretty good baseball game tomorrow night, yeah, we do. Yes, we do. Paul Skeens, Red Louder, buckle up, because tomorrow night is going to be outstanding. We expect to be here. We expect to be playing uh, important baseball in June. And we play every game like we're playing important baseball in June. Like the, the Tuesday on March 22nd against McNeese is a playoff game to us. And the thought process behind that is if you do that all year long, then you can just stay in character when you get to the postseason. I think everybody's just playing for each other. I mean, um, nobody wants to see that last game. I, I know for a fact nobody on this staff, nobody uh, in the dugout, and we're all just playing for each other, doing everything we can. And, um, you know, the bullpen was always talented, so I, none of us were ever worried about it. This is the third game in the College World Series. You've had Riley Cooper come out and pitch in relief. I mean, what gives you that trust in him? It's not about spin rate right now. It's not about velocity. It's about pitch execution and winners. And he is a winner. And um, that's why I believe in him. Riley, what do you do to sort of make yourself physically ready for a moment like this after the 40 pitches yesterday? Um, a lot of water and sleep. Uh, I try to sleep as much as I can. and. I just show up and I feel good. <laughs> okay, here <laughs> <laughs> What did we just watch, y'all? Like, y'all, my nerves are shot. I'm trembling a little bit right now. A lot of people are comparing what's happening right now to 2017, and I understand why. You have a team that has to beat the best team in the country twice, and LSU did it in 2017. Please remember, in 2017, the first elimination game, you had Jared Poche, the winningest pitcher in program history. You had Alex Lang, an All-American and a first round draft pick. It was completely plausible you could win those two games. The crazy thing was Gilbert winning the last one. This, just to get to the last one, you had to have Nate Ackenhausen do something he's never done, followed by Riley Cooper, and then today, you had Griffin Herring inheriting a 2-0 deficit against the best team in the country where we were all massively deflated. What we are watching right now is so much more massively impressive and improbable than 2017, and 2017 was insane! This is, go live on Saturn! Like, this is bonkers what this team has done right now. And now you get Paul Skeens tomorrow against Rhett Lauder, and Paul Skeens is better than Rhett Lauder. I have a, a Lot B 12-year Van Winkle up there, and if they win tomorrow, when Paul Skeens wins tomorrow, I'm going to pour my Van Winkle Lot B. Okay, y'all have an awesome night. Thank y'all so much. Peace. Go Tigers. We'll see you tomorrow. I have not been this jittery for a sporting event in years. Pumped up? Because how can you not be pumped up? I told you you were scared the other day to get your ass to church and go pray. They knew. Wake Forest knew. If they don't win yesterday, if you get to Thursday, it's advantage LSU. Just wanting this team to get it done. And as of 48 hours ago, that was a very, very long shot. Now it's a baseball game. We played Jay Johnson sound earlier about Skeens and if he was going to be available and he's like, hey, we got a process and we go through the same process and we make that determination if a guy is going to be available. LOL. Yeah, I mean, it, <laughs> it's, it's got to be Paul Skeens. Like, he's getting the ball for LSU tonight with a one game to get into the national championship on the line. If he goes and does Paul Skeen stuff, I mean, he lives in a Joe Burrow type aura. Mm -hmm. You got the two best pitchers in the country going head to head against each other. You got the best pitcher in the country. And He's almost sort of like like a looming specter, like like an impending doom for the other team. And yeah. He's coming out of hell, and he's coming with a flamethrower. We're going to find out who the real demon is tonight, and it's Paul Skeens. Your two through five hitters that I've heard all about, all tournament, all I've heard about is the best lineup. These are clutch guys. These are major leaguers. Okay, well, last night they saw the bullpen that everybody's been worried about from LSU 
They saw the bottom half of the bullpen. Eat them alive. Two through five, 0 for 15 last night. Here comes Skeens. Seam in on the hands before. He is at first. And this one is caught by Wine. He went up just like Nick Kurtz does and steps on first. Spider. And Dugas rolls one over. Wilkin is able to get it before it bounces the second time. All right, Chopper and a charge. Yep, fielded cleanly and White. Nice play. Good stretch as well. Over there at first base. We're seeing some defense early. Quickly. And then that happens. But you gotta live with something, right? You can't take it all away. You gotta be prepared for the heater. That's it, the new SEC single season record. Through two innings, he picks up three strikeouts. And this one's to Johnson, who will go to Houston, who will fire to first in time, double play. Well, that's a big 4-6-3 right there, lead off walk. Is Rick. I love what Paul does. If you watch it, the viewers watch. As big as he is, there's, a, there's some gas down the middle. Yeah, I mean, I think you got to go with your best stuff. Obviously, his fastball with his shadow looks like. A one on the ground. They played that beautifully. It's dropped. Now they fired at first. Two down. With much more ease these days. At 2 2. This one poked to left. Uh -oh. And he had trouble seeing it. Oh! You're with us. 1 2. Yep. Yes, sir. Oh. Okay, man. that's another. Strikeout. Heard Trey Morgan last night calling the balls out. They're yeah. coming in. This one, uh, this one kind of surprised him. And you got us into left, and that's going to get down. The LSU Tigers, maybe they're starting to see the spin. That was up in the zone. That's going towards the gap. Joe Bear's not going to be able to get it. Johnson goes to second. He takes a. Two on the ground, a fair ball, long throw, and it is. That one is going to end up going into fair territory. Especially with the conditions. Two, two, great pitch, another strike out, two balls, two strikes. And this one to center field. And Hawk came in and now backs up. Interesting take, 0 2. Yep. Part of what Paul Skeens does is for every strikeout, he donates money to Folds of Honor. One and two to Hawk. Yep, he chases. That's back-to-back -back strikeouts, and that is filthy. This is getting. He, he threw him. Look at him. He throws a hundred, folks. He threw three straight sliders, and now two more here. Right field line. It's going to be hard to get one out of here. On the ground, a nice hop for White. He throws across the diamond. Oh, two, and he challenged him. That's up the middle. Cut off. Johnson. Nice play. Justin Johnson took a hit away from Dylan Cruz. One, two, and there is one the other way, and that one is peeling into the corner. So White hits first, takes a look, and he will put the brakes on at second in this World Series. And oh, it's snared by the third baseman, Brock Wilkin. Last night, Hawk hit one. Two two schemes, good pitch there, a slider. 87 miles an hour, that's seven strikeouts. Two two. Wow. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Got buckled yep. and still swung. Really good. Joe Bear goes back and he's there. That ball. Two to Dugas. Strike. That 
this get jammed. Foul ball. Final oh, good effort to Dugas. All the way to Dugas. chance for Velasa to keep it in front of him. Really field his position. Here it is. There it is. The push. It is fielded. Here's the play. And oh, the tag is made. Trey Morgan sprinting down the first base line. Gloved it. An option pitch to Malazzo standing at the plate and Johnson is out. Let's go. That's the type of play, Bill. That's the type of play you have to have in a College World yep. Series at some point. One delivery in the air to left field on a rope. Let's Pearson do this. Let's in. do this. Baby. the line drive for out number three. Somehow Paul Skeens and the Tigers wiggle off the hook in the top of the eighth inning. And now it's going to be a bullpen game. Cole Rowland is on the mound for Wake Forest. Louder has not gone through a lineup four times, so they stick with the plan that has worked. Dartmouth and now Wake three two. No, he missed in. He got it down, and Roland has it slipped for a second, then threw a fastball over to first. Well, I think he's pitching to him, no? It, it would appear, at least so far, that that surprises me. I just, I don't really want to face Cruz or Tommy White, but I <laughs> definitely right. don't want to face him both. <laughs> All one strike, Cruz. The chance for the biggest one or two here. Oh, he got him to chase by elevating Michael Massey. And his strikeout rate just went up. A huge out of Cruz. They will walk Tommy White intentionally. On a one-two. Now going back, still drifting, and he's there to make the play. Relievers on it's Thatcher Heard. Significantly better than that ERA. Costello. Yes, sir. Dugas. Nice play over there at second base for a guy that's got some limited range. He went over and made sure the leadoff man was retired. And then it's second on that line. And one, two. That's a strike three on the inside corner. A little, little backup pitch. Yep. Look at Massey. Listen to Massey. Fifth time we've gone extra inning scoreless. You got to go back to 1985, so it's been a while. Two and one left field. That sends Pearson back. He's still drifting back, still drifting back. And he makes the catch just in front of the wall. Bird has got to get ahead of hitters. Cannot fall behind hitters, not at this time of the game. Holy smokes, that was close. 3 2, and this one's squared. 0 oh, 2. No wasting time. Massey. Swing and a miss. And Hawk, this is trouble here. He's going to be on first base. Hawk tries again. There's the throw down, and he is under the tag. Ball four, and that should bring Wilkin up with two on to go ahead run. And Wilkin pops it up, slams his bat down. Cruz. Her gets out of it. Dylan Cruz now comes up in a 0 0 game in the bottom of the 11th inning. Speed and a base hit into left field off the bat of Dylan Cruz. Roped it right by the third baseman Wilkin. Wide turn taken by Cruz, but he'll retreat back to first base. But he mashed that one right to left field. And it was bobbled out there in left field by Costello. Cruz slammed on the brakes. That was a shot past the third baseman. And we're going to have a slow walk by Corey Mascara back out to the mound here to visit with Massey.
this is the guy that said, I don't know how you beat Wake Forest. It just seems basically impossible. I don't know. It seemed possible yesterday. moments of my life, honestly. Couldn't be more proud of our team. I think that um, exemplifies the talent on this roster, uh, but more importantly, the character and the people. And as I look to my left, I just see three great players that are better people than they are players. Um, 
the best pitched college baseball game I have ever seen from both sides. I mean, we just slayed a giant tonight. I'm just wondering, what did the conversation about starting today look like? Was there ever any doubt? There was no doubt in my mind. And to be honest, there wasn't a lot of conversation. I mean, we had a meeting like January 14th or something like that. And the goal, you know, for this season was to win a national championship. This was, you know, what we've had our eyes on all year. And it's really cool to, to be here now. Tommy, a after the celebration, you went and embraced, I think, Camden and Nassie. I know you guys were close. What, why was that important for you to do? And what kind of, a number of your teammates started doing that with Wake players. Why was that important to them? I mean, their season's over. It's, it's a very hard time. They had high expectations coming into this, and uh, they played great. But I, I've known Camden and uh, Ben Lee for quite some time now. We're both uh, we're all from Tampa. I played with them, against them, growing up my whole life. Yeah, I mean, he's one of my close friends, so I didn't want him to feel anything. I just wanted to make sure that he was all right. Like Coach says all the time, it's just all about execution, and I was going to do anything to get that win out for us. I wasn't going to let us down. You know, we, we lost a very good baseball game on Monday night. Like, I mean, that was high-level stuff. I mean, if you rolled that out at Fenway Park or Yankee Stadium and you, if you put big league uniforms on both teams, you probably wouldn't know the difference. That was a tough loss. That was a heartbreaker. And so I felt like they just needed to be reminded, we definitely can do this. And then the pregame speech to Tuesday was a really simple speech. On the whiteboard in our meeting room, I just wrote out Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. And on Tuesday, I wrote Nate's name down with eight other pitchers. And then we just drew lines over to Wednesday. It was going to be somebody in that grouping of nine. Thursday, I wrote down Skeens, Heard. I wrote down Saturday, Sunday, and then Monday, one game, this team to win the national title. I looked at it and goes, anybody got any questions whether we can do this or not? Great, let's get on the bus. And that was basically the announcement that Paul would pitch today. And I will tell you, this is the first team that I've ever coached that I believe could win a national championship hands down in that meeting that Paul was referencing to what do you want to do national championship came out of Dylan's mouth are you sure and then it's quiet no wait a minute we got to be really sure if this is what we're going to try to go do and then how are we going to do it are we going to be selfless are we going to have a strong mental game uh, where we can recover from failure resist the urge to be complacent and uh, laid it all out and uh, these guys have stuck to it every single day that's pretty special. It was not over-exaggerating. That is one of the greatest moments of my entire life, what happened on that field tonight. My Van Winkle 12 year Lock B, and as promised, y'all, we are going to bust this up. Tommy White, you beautiful bastard. Thank you so much for coming to LSU. Man, we are the ones that you should fear at night. And don't forget, all you skinny little boys walking around them Florida beaches, thinking you look good, cause you're taking Ozimbic. Look around, Akinhaus, Cooper, Beloso. In the age of Ozimbic, the thick man is king and the thick body boys rule the day once again. And guess what? You George wearing jabronis! Your neck partner! Go! Mother! Effin!
this season. The one two, oh, did it get him? Oh, yes, it did. And he's going to reach base again. 70. Whether the pitch is a ball or a strike, he hits one with Cruz in motion. He'll be safe at second. Throw to head one two to Dugas. To come back, and then got a couple outs. Great at bat, great at bat. Pitch count way up, picks up a walk. The way you want to start the game. Two all into left field. Dylan Cruz with his speed, touches third. Cruz now around third, coming in, throw not in time, and the Tigers are on the board. That one right in the zone, and Veloso, who's known to pull, goes opposite field to left. To score Dylan Cruz and the Tigers take the early lead. Yep, yeah, got a 2-0 count, just didn't try to do too much with it, hit the pitch there. Slams into the wall. Made me a little nervous. 406 feet from the top, the ladder there. And after being down 3 0, comes back to punch out right. That's where Floyd wants to live. Rivera chased above the elevator that Floyd's right not. Just inside. Now a 2 2. And this one is into right field. That's going to get down. A huge hit from the nine hole hitter, Malazzo. 2. Okay. One gets by. And a first pitch caught. What a play by the third baseman. Halter to no. chased it. What a John Sproke. Got the line shot from Tommy White. And he punched out Morgan. And then he can elevate. 96. Third strike out of the game for Floyd. He's got the good stuff tonight. And the key over the course of this game is just going to see if Florida can lay off of. of We'll take the strike out. That'll be number four. Staring at one right down the middle. That one can be just above the knees. That's back to back pitches. There it is. He looks good. RBI single. That one is smoked down the line and left. And it is. Gavin Dugas leads the yard. And the Tigers now have a 2 0 lead on his 17th of the year. their team scoreless for five innings. There's a fastball strikeout. Oh, boy. That's off. And a 3-1. Got one to hit. Sends this one to right center field. Cruz is going back. He's looking. It drops in the gap. Curlin's going to step on third. He's going to be held in third. And wow. That ball is the score. Gone on top of one. That's a tough play. Took a bad hop off Morgan. They flip to first. They get Paglione. The run comes in. What a play by Floyd and Thompson at that point, who was moved over to second base, because that was a rocket. And they kept that play alive to get Caglione. Chased up in 97. College CWS. That's up the middle, and that's going to put him on. And off the end of the bat to center field. Langford coming, late jump, and he cannot. That ball still on the ground. Roberts held in third base. Uh, Morgan, I should say, held in third base. And they're going to put Beloso on. A one. It's the one, two. Good pitch. Boy, he has come up with the outs when he needed them. Great slider away. He picks up strikeout number eight. Chase that one. It's been the best pitch. He's got nine. Strikeouts. The 0 2 from Fisher. Way outside. He got him. And that's a line shot. That one is down the line. Going over to cut it off is Pearson. And Evans is hustling to second. And he dives in with a double. Ty Evans and a hitter. And then Jay Johnson came out for a quick talk with a home plate umpire. And White will have one play. And he did. Slap to the second baseman. He missed it. Runner was coming on contact. And we are tied. 
Kevin Dugas. Challenged him again to short. <laughs> Thompson kind of. And that is roped into right. That's going to get down. Evans will pick it up. That one is caught by Caglion. Fires to second. And they throw it back to Fisher, who wasn't on the bag. Jones rolls it over. And that is the play you can take. Tied him up. I want to go to LSU. That's my lifelong dream. He's living it right now. 11 punch outs, two in the inning. That ball is hammered to right field. Oh, all is right. He is on it. As he flies the fence, the Gators jump into the lead. 106.6 miles per hour off the bat. And Florida now leads it 3-2. E.T. Ryopel has six hits in the postseason, boys. Five of them have been launched. Thirteen runners left on base right now is looming large. Yep, Sheldon, just watch that go by. That's another strikeout, and the totals continue to be five. That's another one. 14 strikeouts, and you're starting to move into some historic territory here at Omaha in a College World Series game. 15 strikeouts. Ty Floyd. Now Tommy White comes to the plate. LSU just trying to get runners on and find a way to get them in. Florida leading 3-2. Pitch to White. In the air to left field. Going back is Shelna to the track, to the wall. It's out of here. Tommy White. base here in the bottom of the ninth. We got extras, free baseball coming your way from Omaha. Got him to chase, he's gone. Strikeout number 33 overall. Robertson center, Langford in left, and he will not off the bat. Here comes the first one to White. Look out, right above his head, and that sends Cruz down to second base. Ooh, was that close? Sometimes a wild pitch makes your decision making a little easier. It does. They do call the infield fly rule. Robertson is there, on top of the order, and Curl has just struggled so much. Then get him or to get the bat. He says it got him. Right back at you, off the glove, and now you may have an issue. Cooper gets it, Dreyer's not in time. And that ball is ripped to left field. It is caught out there in left field by Pearson. They throw back. What a play. Pearson, they don't get the double play. Look at that catch. How about the athleticism? And a 112 mile an hour out. And Josh Pearson maybe just saved the game. Pagliolo. Morgan is called off. And Florida cannot bring the runner in. All right, well, we'll start with another guy very capable of hitting the ball over the wall, and that is Cade Veloso. He's got a couple of hits tonight. They have stayed away from him, but to lead off the inning, Neely will be dealing. Top of the 11th, 3-3, game one of the World Series. Chase the first one.
LSU. Tigers pick up the win. They get a leg up. The first win and the best two out of three here in Omaha. Tigers move to 53 and 16. Florida moves to 53 and 16. Just a team that feels like they got just something special about them. Number one preseason, they held up under that weight almost all year, faltered just a touchdown to stretch, but they have regained it all back and now are one win away from LSU's seventh national championship. It just keeps getting better. It does, it really does. Ty was outstanding tonight. Um, really hard to, to put into words what that performance meant, you know, for the outcome of the game and for our team. I love Ty, and he works really hard, and just to see him do that was amazing, especially here in that game. Team chemistry has been amazing all year and stuff. Us pitchers are all really, really close and stuff, and uh, we support each other so much to each other, and we have so much success. We're very happy for them, them when they have a lot of success. I think it's probably just because of Paul, you know what I mean, and, and Paul being so out of this world good. Nobody's really paid attention to him, but the pro people are. Like, you're not going to last very long on that draft board. And uh, somebody will be very, very happy um, with Ty Floyd. And I think he'll pitch for a very long time. And like I mentioned with a couple other of the pitchers in the game on Thursday night, uh, there's a chance for it to be a short arc from Omaha to, you know, Big League Stadium for him. But we're not sitting here in, in this position without Ty Floyd. I feel like he's one of the most underrated, underappreciated, you know, players in college baseball this year. I just love this university so much, and especially this team. You know, there's so many good guys and good people on this team, and you know, some of my best friends. You know, going to talk to them for the rest of my life, and you know, I just love playing baseball with them. I think that's a, it's as simple as that. And you know, you ask every guy on the team, and they'll give you the same answer. You know, it's it's nothing more than that. And I grew up uh, in New Orleans. You know, wanting to be Mikey Matuk. You know, Ryan Sheff. Uh, Jared Mitchell, uh, you know, watching highlights of the 2009 National Championship on repeat on YouTube when I was a kid, and you know, this, this means the world. You know, one, just being in Omaha, and two, playing for a National Championship. Yeah, I'm, I'm really proud of him. You know, my first impressions were of him, where he was all about the team. All he wanted to do was be a great player for LSU. He's never mentioned pro baseball one time. It's just, what can I do to help, whether that's leadership, fix my swing, improve my approach maybe be able to play some first base. I just kind of had a feeling we would get to our best team. He would be a part of that, and then um, that was really, really clear. And um, he never never wavered, you know, in any of that. I tell people all the time, like, him going down last year, that hurt our team dr dramatically. And I think, you know, if you're paying attention to the College World Series, you can clearly see why. Obviously, we talked about Kay, but, but Gavin as well. You have to have two things to get here and to win here. You have to have future major league players. That's clear now. Like nobody is getting here anymore without future major league players. And you have to have old players that really know what they're doing. And those two guys really know what they're doing. They've made this, you know, for me as, an, as a new coach. Like those two guys have made this situation, program, culture. They're as important as anybody. They don't get talked about the same way, you know, because you know, you got Dylan, you got Paul, and those guys should be talked about too, because they're leaders and they're special talents. But you know, when it was two to nothing, you know, it's like, okay, yeah, we know who drove in the first two runs today. And they're sitting right in that spot in the order for a reason, because I know what I'm gonna get in terms of those at bats. <laughs> Legends, legacies, they're made in June in Omaha. When, when you experience what we all just went through, you realize only something there on that stage can match or surpass what we've seen. Josh Pearson making that running catch saves you the game. Tommy Tanks ties it, Cade Peloso, the bomb to give you the lead. Riley Cooper might be the MVP of the College World it's, Series. It's, it's true freshman Brett Laxton strike out 16 Wichita State hitters in a complete game shutout when LSU won its second national championship. That 16 strikeouts is the single game strikeout record in the College World Series and it stood, I think it's been tied, it's been matched, but it hasn't been surpassed. Ty Floyd just set that record tonight. Not anymore. Like it's incredible, dude. Cade Peloso has cemented his legacy as an LSU legend forever. Yeah. You're gonna talk about Cade Beloso forever because of this. 
Where's because of Kay, this. Where did Kay go to high school? John Curtis. So you have John Curtis. You got Morgan from New Orleans. You got Josh Pearson from the 318. I hate to say West, West Monroe, Monroe. Stand up. Coming up with the big catch. It takes a village to raise a child. It takes the boot to win a championship. North Louisiana, South Louisiana, all the homies from Lake Charles. Everybody's putting their resources together. And now the Tigers are one game away from a natty title. Gavin Dugas from Homer Christian. Gavin Dugas was three for five tonight. Unbelievable. Homer, single, du single double homer. You have to have your superstars, but every great championship team is also made up of those Louisiana upperclassmen that, that, just, that, that are just drawing from a deeper fucking well. And this team has been tested throughout the year, and time and time again, they pass the test. The mental and physical toughness of this team is the trait that has carried them to this point. And if they win a natty, that will be the main trait that we should look back on. And so to get to this point and to find a way to make the plays to win the game, that's how you achieve immortality. And now they sit nine innings away from immortality. Go Tigers, let's more. get one more. Let's get one more, boys. Let's get one more. Downtown Baton Rouge, the Tigers are one win away from the national championship. Would you say this is the toughest matchup of the three, potentially? You know, with Walter, who's been there, Ace, who's been oh. their better pitcher, who has a postseason ERA of under one. I don't think there's any doubt that. Yeah. Look, I know Sproach the, is the Friday night guy, but Waldrop is the, better pitcher. is the better pitcher. He throws a split finger, which you don't see very much at the college level. In his three postseason starts, he's gone seven innings, eight innings, and six innings, 37 strikeouts, and 22 innings pitched in the postseason. And he's got an ERA of .86. I mean, he has been magnificent. He's their best arm, and it's why winning game one oh, was shoot. so important because you didn't want your season hanging in the balance having to face this guy. Jimmy, it feels a lot like in 2009. 2009, LSU won game one against Texas in extras in 11 innings. Mikey Mott took with the big knock. And then Taylor Youngman from Texas just put him in a chokehold in game two. And then they were set up to come back and they won game three behind Anthony Renato. I, I hope we don't get to a game three. I think we all hope this don't get to a game three. MLB Pipeline has him as the fifth best pitching prospect in this draft, number 20 overall. Like, he's a dude. You're, you're going to go up against well, as good a dude as you've seen in this draft. In this with, with, with that. Payoff to Curlin. His bounce left side. And Jordan Thompson who bumps into Tommy White. Not in time. Sharply to Trey Morgan, who gobbles and gets the first down. 2-0. 2-1. in house, it's 2-2. He's a fastball cut on and missed. Two go. Fifth-year senior catcher in the five spot. 2-0. Pitch. 3-1. Fans activate in the first. The 3-2. Strike three call. Third in the country in strikeouts. Yeah, Dylan and the Tigers have their hands full today because they're facing a really good one. On the ground, sharply past the dive of Colby Halter. It's a pitch that generates whips like that on two thirds of the swings, and it's the first K for Hurt. Goes the opposite way toward the gap in right center and splits it all the way to the wall. Gavin Dugas puts the Tigers on top. Here in game two. How locked in is this guy? Oh, a guy caught with a bunch of sliders last night. This series. Inside and a four pitch walk. We did start the first two games here. 1 0. The 1 1. 2 2. 3 2. Misses. Oh, here is the red shirt junior, Braden Joe Bear, three times. It's 17 total. On the ground, right side, and Cade Curlin. Caglione to the bag. 2-2, up the ladder. Three Ks in a row for Nate Ackenhausen. That was the story last night, it was up the ladder. Pitches. Shellnut strikes out. Off speed, and it's four punch outs in a row. Okay, so so what is it? Because, I mean, it's, it's good, don't get me wrong. Base hits. And that one foul. 
No, they say that's yeah. fair. Evans didn't even leave home plate, and that ball is gone. Well, we told you there would be offense with the wind blowing, and Ty Evans down the line, and this game is tied. Why he's in there, Berkey? You can do something with. Braden Joe Bear roams in. Walter deals up and away in a four-pitch walk. Dylan Cruz flares one behind Josh Rivera in the left for his second base hit. 2-2. Two -two. And White on a line into right field, a base hit. Pearson gets waved around to the plate, and LSU leads. You don't accidentally drive in 100 runs. You know what the heck you're doing up there. Tommy White certainly does that. The chill that goes back to make the catch. And it's a Trey Morgan sack fly to make it 3-1 Tigers. Double that he torched in the first, then he gets hit. out that and kicks away and Tommy White moves up 3-1 outside it's 1-2 who delivers the 2-2 2-2 again eighth pitch to Travinsky another 2-2 and this is pulled to third and Halter ends the inning all right now we go to the top of the third and Kate Curlin gets hit by the first pitch a one Langford pulls it past Tommy White in the left field, the base hit. Curlin stops it second. And right on cue, Wyatt Langford, Caglione. Grounded out sharply his first time and rolls this one into center. Curlin scores and Langford and Caglione deliver. Well, two. Rivera on the ground in the left field, the base hit. Langford waved around. Pearson's throw is cut. And this game is tied at three. Just kind of felt like it was coming. <laughs> With a 2 2. Ryan Pell strikes out. Hammond on the ground towards short. Thompson bobbles. And they're loaded for Florida. 0 oh, 2. Cut on and miss. That's what he does. <laughs> He's going to throw that one. Breaking ball to start, and Evans skies this one down the line and left toward the corner. Oh. Pearson back at the wall. That ball is gone! It's a grand slam for Evans! Twice to the pole! Are you kidding me? That ball was hit to the clouds. It's going to be a factor today. Not as high as you ever. Alter rolls it. Uh, Trey Morgan. Gobert takes, and it's a leadoff walk. Breaking ball strikes out Thompson. Round number one of the third. Star Quinn Matthews to settle in. 2 1. Only pitch wearing the white hat. Yes, that's right. 3 2. 3 2 again. Missing. He gets hit here. And so two walks and a hit batter from Hurston Waldrop. The 1 0. White on the ground towards short. Rivera flips. Curlin turns, and it's two. Inning over. And it's a leadoff walk. A 1 for Gidry. Off the end of the bat, squibbed into the shift. Dugas a long way to go, and he doesn't get Langford. Who can burn? Yeah, it's we've talked about it plenty this year, but now the whole country's getting to see it. 2 0 to short. That's Gavin Dugas to Thompson, who will hold it and then throws it away. Curlin scores, and it's a five run lead. Oh, the second big blunder from Jordan Thompson gives the Gators a run. Goes Travinsky's throw. Got him. Gidry fires. And that's it. 3 1. Misses. On the ground to short. Carlin's turn. Two again. And Cade walks. 2 2. On the ground to short. And Rivera flips to Curlin. Ryan Pell rides it into center field. The base hit. Hagenhausen can't believe it. Two strikes and two outs. Off the glove of Jack Caglione. <laughs> Number three 
starter. Cruz chops it. Halter charges. Cruz can fly, and Halter got it. Bryce Collins came on to the fifth, and Halter tacks this one to right center field, back toward the wall, and then one hops off the wall. Colby Halter with a leadoff double to be quite like he had. And he tags it. Left field and launched by Ryan Langford. Destroyed. The ball he hit last night would have ended up in the same place if that any backs. Yeah. This is this is about as good as you can do it. A hanging slider, and he now has the two farthest balls in the history. Solid, stable, and simple. Uh oh. Caglio the opposite way. And that is back toward the wall. And gone. Back to back for the Gators. Number 32. Jack Caglione alone. Josh Rivera chops it at Tommy. Tough one, obviously. A uh, really good job by Florida swinging the bat. Uh, they got great players. Uh, they played great today. You have to credit them. It was just an onslaught of good at bats and, and barrels, and uh, they're a great team, and, and they played great today. All year long, it's been a one-game season, however you want to phrase it, but now it is a one-game season. The ultimate test of that mindset, how do you as leaders try to get this team back? We're not lost. We're, we're ready to go. We're going we're gonna to get through what we need to do to get ready for tomorrow tonight. Uh, we're going to prepare like we always do, and uh, we'll be ready to go tomorrow. So nothing changes for us. We're going to keep playing baseball the way we always do. Yeah, I mean, I feel like everybody in the locker room already forgot about it, really. You know, we uh, do a pretty good job of that, and I think we've only lost, you know, back-to-back -back games twice this year. So we've been clean uh, throughout this whole playoff. You know, it's just one of those little bumps in the road, and I think we'll be good tomorrow. Baseball's a crazy game, um, so we'll be ready to go tomorrow, and uh, we'll have our minds right. 
but this is 30 runners left on base in two games. I'm wondering if you're seeing a trend that concerns you in the quality of the at-bats that you're having with runners in scoring position? You know, I mean, I, I, sure, I guess. I mean, but I, I don't really know how to answer that. I mean, we're the best offensive team in the country, and when you lead the country in on-base percentage, you're going to leave more runners on base. Part of the credit has to go to the pitcher at times, and I think it was uh, Purnell did a nice job, you know, inducing the ground ball for the double play. But, yeah, we got our guys. You know, we're not going to bring in a bunch of free agents for tomorrow night. It's a 27-man roster, and I'm good with that. I'm totally good with that. Jordan Thompson had those two uh, tough errors early. Do you plan to stick with him, and how do you go about coaching him through that? Yeah, he'll, he'll, he'll play tomorrow. There's no question about it. Um, he started every game for two years. Um, he's played very good shortstop. Yeah, I mean, I love Jordan. We wouldn't be in the College World Series, you know, without Jordan and how he's played this year. Um, he's had a tough, tough tournament offensively, um, but there's been a lot of stories in the College World Series of guys struggle, 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 and then get a big hit for you and uh, make a big play for you. And um, I think he's a great candidate for that. For us, you know, it's about playing a character. And, um, you know, when I look at this record of, you know, Florida's 54 and 16, they do a good job and they make it hard on that. We're 53 and 17. And if you're 53 and 17, you've done a heck of a lot more right than wrong. And so it is what it is. You know, I mean, I've had a super regional game relatively similar to this. And then we turn the score around on the team in, in game three. We're going to stick to how we prepare, roll it out tomorrow and give it everything that we have. You know, it's one game for national championship. I think Coach O'Sullivan probably feels great about his team, you know, as he should with the players they have. I feel great about my team with the players that we have. The last three games of the regular season were in Tuscaloosa. All we had to do was win one game to win the SEC championship. We lost on Friday night and Saturday they beat us 28-2, which of course is well documented. And then Sunday we came back to beat them in Tuscaloosa to win the SEC. So I do know this, and, and I'm positive about this. The people that were on that team, I can guarantee you that driving up to Alabama on that Sunday, when we got off that bus, not one single player believed that Alabama was better than LSU. Mm -hmm. Not one player. That idea of achieving immortality, Achilles, in the movie Troy, you're about to beach and you know, immortality awaits, take it. Will you achieve immortality? I mean, let's be clear, like let's say this team doesn't win, you will still be remembered for, for a while, you will still be celebrated, we'll think back fondly on stuff like some of those Tommy Tanks home runs uh, to, to, to beat Wake Forest, to tie it up Saturday, the Trey Morgan play on the butt, like we will think back on these things fondly, but they will dissipate over time. I have seen this firsthand, being a member of that 2011 football team, there's a lot of good, a lot of good that year, a lot of great that year and on the verge of being the greatest and yet in the end what are your second place second place is nice but you don't go on the intimidator you don't become one of those teams that three generations down the road people know about already now i realize when i talk to random people my senior year was um i was on that team where you know we, we lost 21 nothing in the national championship right people used to know exactly what you were talking about they don't know a lot do not. When you go around the country, it used to be common knowledge. Now I've watched it over my life slowly erode. You know, people do remember the 07 National Championship team, the 2003 National Championship team. You have already achieved greatness. You're already heroes. You've already done so many good things. But if you want to truly live forever, you got 27 outs. 27 outs, an entire lifetime of work. Not just this season, not just the fall. Your entire life. All the travel ball that you did as a little kid. When other people were going around and going to summer camp, having fun, and you were having to go to yet another tournament on the weekend that maybe you didn't really feel like going to, or you're practicing in the cage, whatever the case would be. Y'all understand what I'm saying. An entire lifetime of work comes down to 27 outs. Did it the hard way, having to work through Tennessee multiple times with Tennessee seemingly having every advantage, having to work through Wake Forest, the deepest staff, deepest lineup in the entire country. And now once again, having to work through the Florida Gators who D1 baseball this morning called the best top to bottom roster in all 
of college baseball. But nothing in life worth doing is ever easy. And I mean that. The harder something is while you're doing it, you hate it a lot of time. And it's brutal and it's stressful and it pushes you to your limits mentally, physically. You feel like you may break in the doing. But once it's done, that's what ends up sticking with you. Those are the stories that you tell down the road. Winning a championship is not easy. We talked about it the other day. Whenever you go into a game, you have to accept there are going to be ups and downs. It's not going to be some easy cruise. You are going to get punched in the mouth. You're going to get bloodied up. You're going to be challenged. Do you want to give up? Do you want to ring the bell? Because that is what is going to determine if you achieve immortality. How do you respond to the adversity you're met with? I don't care what you did yesterday. I don't care what you did Saturday. All that matters is what are you going to do today? Zoom in further. I don't care what you did last pitch. I don't care what you're going to do the next pitch. All that matters is what are you going to do this pitch? You just booted the ball and allowed a man on first. What are you going to do the next time the ball comes to you? Oh, you struck out swinging last time. You stranded a couple. What are you going to do the next time you get that opportunity? Are you going to let one failure infect you and lead to another? At the end of the day, baseball is baseball and you are good at baseball. So go do what you have done to get you to this point and win a championship and achieve immortality. If you're scared, we got no room for you in the boat, okay? We have no room for fear. Paul Skeen's not afraid. Dylan Cruz is not afraid. Tommy White is not afraid. Gavin Dugas, Kate Veloso, everybody you've seen step up. You don't make the plays they have made this entire year by being afraid, okay? So if you're scared, you already know go to church. Bye, dog. Do whatever you got to do. It's come 6 p.m. tonight. There ain't no fear. There's only the fight. First 
third, nobody out, and we see Jordan Thompson coming to the plate and listen to this Tiger crowd. They're on their feet for him. I saw him in the hallway this morning, and I told him something special was going to happen today. And he said, yes, sir, it will. Caglione fires to the plate. First pitch a strike on the inner half, and it's 0-1. Florida's middle infield playing back at double play depth. Alter, the third baseman, is up to the grass. Caglione, the 0-1. Swing and a miss. Out in front of that one. And it's 0-2. The thing that stinks about this for Thompson is that he has had such a tremendous season. Mm -hmm. For Thompson this year, it looked like he really got it right, and he did. He had a tremendous junior season from a fielding standpoint, and I thought he was playing really big for him at the plate. Yesterday, you saw it kind of leak over into the field. So, you know, I hate that for Thompson. You hate to see him struggle on this stage, and you can only pull for a kid like him to have a moment tonight. I mean, you got nine innings left of the season and you got a championship on the line and you hope a kid like Thompson who has paid his dues has been through the ringer of it he's been ridiculed and had tough times here at LSU can get a moment tonight sports can be beautiful in that way yeah sports can be very humbling sports can be very beautiful in the same way all we remember about Thompson is the bad he makes one play tonight and all of that is erased mm -hmm. one play and all of it's gone. The pass in third, Joe Bear in first base, 2 0 for the leads. No outs in the 0 2 pitch. Let's go! into left field. Jordan Thompson delivers. Two guys on his way home, and they cut the lead in half. It's 2 to 1. And listen to Tiger fans applaud Jordan Thompson. I see you, JT. So happy for that kid. Hope he gets three more of those today. On the ground, Fielder will go to second for one, back to first, nobody's there. Ball four, and he hit him on the arm. Second time he's been hit, that brings in a run of three one hits. This Extends the Tiger lead. It's now 4-2. to two. RBI 103 on the season for Tommy Tanks. Joe Bear rounding third, headed for home. He will be safe. Going down to 
second. Thompson is safe. Jordan Thompson making it happen when it matters most. The golden spikes, the 200 home runs, and all the offers, none of that mattered. What mattered was what happened on this field today, and Jordan Thompson just drove in his second run of the championship game of the College World Series. A one-two pitch to Pierce in the air. High and deep to right field. This may be oh. Josh Pearson, a rocket shot to right. His fourth home run of the year. A two-run variety. And the Tigers now lead nine to two over Florida. Boy, they got to be partying in West Monroe, Louisiana right now. showed up and uh, he's got some stuff that he may be going to work with. That's Paul Skeens. Second, Shelna just now getting to the baseball. They'll wave Cruz around. He will score, and Tommy White delivers again. The 0-1 Morgan to the alley in left center field. Gonna get down. Shelna has to chase it to the wall. White around third. He will score. Back-to-back -back RBI doubles for the Tigers. This time for Trey Morgan. That's double number 15, and RBI 53, and it's 16 to 4 LSU. The 1-1 one, one, rocket shot to right field. This Let's baby go. is gone. Let's go. Braden Jobert with the smash, the flip, and a two-run bomb.
by Thompson. Throw to first, right on the money to Morgan. One down, two to go for the Fighting Tigers of LSU. As they lead 18 to four. Ty Evans to the plate, ground ball to short. Thompson backhands, pumps, fires, on the money. Two down, one to go for the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Come on, freshman right-hander, get this one yourself. Two outs, runner at first, the 0-2 pitch, swing and a miss, and all is right in the world. Tigers win, Tigers win. The national championship is headed back to Baton Rouge. The dog pile begins to look for the man. as time permits. Now we'll wait for him. We'll wait for him. You're in no hurry. I'm in no hurry. <laughs> there he goes. I'm going to lose you now. National championship team. I think the most gratifying part of it is they were national championship people every single day of this thing. I really believe this will go down as one of the best teams in college baseball history. I love these guys. I'm so proud of them. 
and they are a worthy champion if there ever was a worthy champion. It's such a great feeling. I felt like almost every box was checked off except that national championship box, and we all knew this was going to be our last game uh, here, and, you know, to finally say that I'm a national champion, it's the greatest feeling in the world, and, you know, I feel like all the boxes are checked off now, so it's good. After I got that second out, I kind of looked at Gavin and, you know, almost started tearing up, but knowing that we have to get one more out, you know, I wanted that last ball too. <laughs> but, you know, I, I just can't be more proud of my guys in the way that, that we've came out all year and just competed and fought through adversity. You know, when guys went down, guys stepped up, you know, that, that just speaks about the character about our team and the way that we just handle our business and, and own our deal every single day. So it's very rewarding for uh, what we were able to accomplish, not only tonight, but the whole season. The greatest feeling in the world, who we did it with, every single guy right here. and. Every guy in that locker room, um, it just it means everything. You grew up wanting to be Mikey Matuk and Ryan Schumpf and, and Jared Mitchell. What does it make you feel to, to realize that now kids are going to be growing up wanting to be Kate Beloso? Uh, I mean, that's pretty cool. Uh, I'd want to be like this guy to the left of me, you know, these two guys. You know, we have a saying around here, you know, don't dream. If you dream about it, it seems almost unreachable, but set a goal and reach it, and the sky's the limit. And it feels really good to be Mikey Matuk and, you know, Jared Mitchell, Ryan Schiff, Sean Ochenko now. You know, that's something that no one can take away from us being national champions. You know, this program's so lucky to have Coach Shane Johnson, and, you know, they're going to have to build a new intimidator for what he's about to do, and he's coming. He's not stopping, I promise that. You know, to leave LSU a national champion is something I'll remember for the rest of my life. You know, I'm kind of sad that the season's over in a sense. Like, we just won the national championship, but, you know, I'm sad. We're not going to be able to practice and play anymore and stuff like that. But, man, I'm looking forward to those reunions for sure. <laughs> when I stepped in the locker room this year and, and saw all the talent and all the group of guys that we had, you know, I thought last year, you know, it's so important for me to be where my feet are and enjoy these moments and to go out on top, a national champion, and to cap off uh, my career and just an unbelievable feeling. The leadership and the chemistry in the in the clubhouse, I'll forever cherish that. And Kate Beloso, Gavin Dugas, Hayden Travinsky, veteran leaders, you know, as a transfer, I didn't know anyone coming in, take me under the wing right away. Dylan leading my example, Jordan taking charge in the infield, Paul Skeens leading the staff. That type of leadership, it's really special. Everyone's going to probably remember us because of this national championship. And uh, I think for me, the, the greatest honor that I've had being at LSU and playing shortstop here for three years is you know, being able to go to battle with these guys every single day, practice, workouts, early mornings, you know, days where you're tired but nobody cares. And, uh, you know, those are things that you can't trade for the world. And uh, you know, I just can't be more blessed and grateful for the opportunity that, uh, that we all had to be together and to be able to... Uh, to share this moment, you know, it's uh, something that I'll always remember. Yeah, we got we got punched in the mouth yesterday, uh, but that's the beauty of baseball. You get to wake up in the morning and do it all over again. So as soon as the game was over, everybody already forgot about it. And we woke up today, and you could just see on everybody's faces they were ready to go. And uh, there was nobody in the country, in the world, that was going to beat us today. You know, my wife's asking me, is hey, Jordan okay? And this and that, and not really knowing all of it. And so I just brought him into my room this morning and go like, hey, man, like, we're winning the national championship tonight and you're going to do something special. But is there anything I can do to help you get to that point tonight? And he looked me in the eye and said, I'm good. I saw tonight happen before it happened. I get choked up when I, I mean, I look at Cade and just watching the tournament that he had and just thinking about where he was, where we got him. Then he got hurt, missed the season, stayed with it, had to recruit him to come back and not move on with his life. And then to have that turn, we're not the national champions without him. This league's a beast. And so to beat Kentucky in a Super Regional, to beat Tennessee twice here, to beat Florida to win a national championship, that's that's really meaningful. Because it's one thing to have, you know, the best writers in the country write about you, how great you are. It's another thing, entirely different thing to go do it on the field. Coach, I had a chance to visit with your dad on the field uh, a while ago. He was great. Um, said that you told him when you were five that you were going to be a baseball coach what's it like to share this experience with him wow <laughs> might see me crack here I got started on this coaching journey really early I mean it's at the high school level but I grew up in the house of a legend I mean he's the winningest track coach in like California history I mean he didn't lose for like 10 years like 10 years you know what I mean and that's all I wanted to be and I'm sat next to Bill seven years ago today with leaving the tying run on third base in this game and the winning run on second base I think about that every single day. And this championship's for this team, and it's about this team. But personally, part of me feels like I got a little bit of that back tonight for those guys. 
this is a really special place. And um, yeah, I mean, Scott's there in the back. I think he's the best athletic director in the country. I'm obviously very grateful for him giving me this opportunity. I mean, it's to roll the dice, man. The West out here has not worked out. It hadn't worked out. I think they took a chance. I mean, I sat in front of them and, you know, wanted this worse than anything in the world and believed that I could do it, that I could do it with this group. And um, they, they gave me the chance. And so I'm grateful for that. But that's not where it stops. It's every single day. I mean, what baseball coaches, athletic director calls them two or three times a week, everything good. And Dan's in my office every single day. What do you need? You know, how, do, how can we make this process that you're trying to develop the best that it possibly can be? There's a lot of people that made this happen tonight. You know, Coach Maneri, I mentioned earlier on the field, making a transition as easy as it possibly could be. The GOAT himself, like, Skip Bertman, I mean, we're either in person or on the phone three to four times a week. A lot of people contributed to this, and it makes it even that much more special. I wanted to win a national championship, and I wanted these guys to win a national championship. I wanted last year's team to come to Omaha. And so, like, just taking a second out there and, and looking at Dylan, I mean, and looking at Trey, and looking at Jordan, and looking at Ty Floyd, I mean, we had to win game one. Obviously, everybody saw what happened yesterday. I mean, we, was, we were mapping out the series. Like, we have to win Saturday night. Like, we had to win that game to have a chance to win the national championship. We knew that going into it. And the performance he gave, I just, I want it for everybody. I mean, it's a great state. It's a lot like where I grew up. I would want it for LSU. I know all that legacy and tradition. I'm so honored, like, to be a part of that. I really wanted it for these guys because they've done everything that I've asked them to do and set the standard better than you could possibly do it. And that's why this is important. Not just because we're national championships, because we've been national champions every day of this thing. Go Tigers! LSU national champs, 18 to four, ass whipping over the Florida Gators. You know, we got a little bit of everything in this College World Series, y'all. Paul Skeens with a dominant performance over Tennessee in the opener. We got a great game against Wake Forest and the Tigers came up a bit short. We saw the LSU Tigers eliminate the Tennessee Vols behind it for the ages performance by Nate Ackenhausen. We saw the Tigers come back a day later against the number one team in the country, the Wake Forest Demon Deacons. And we got to see Paul Skeens pitch against Rhett Lauder, two guys that are gonna be probably the first two pitchers taken in the draft. You punch your way to the championship series on a dramatic home run by Tommy White. You go to the championship series, Ty Floyd strikes out 17. Tommy White, another dramatic homer. Cade Beloso, a homer in the 11th. Sunday goes the way it does, and you lose by a record number 24 to 4, and you return the favor in the national championship game, and you absolutely pile drive the Florida Gators. You know what? It just wouldn't have meant this much. It, it just wouldn't have meant quite as much if it was anyone other than Florida. It could have been Mississippi State. It could have been Vanderbilt. It could have been our Kansas. It could have been Oral Roberts, TCU, or any of them other chump schools that try to play baseball. Yeah, it was nice beating Texas and all blue blood, Roger Clemens, whatever, who cares? My point is, it was so nice to beat those bastards that beat you back in 2017. It was so nice to watch the 500 Florida Gator fans that bothered to show up, sit there and cry. It was just really nice to beat that team. And not only to beat them, to put up 18 runs on 24 hits to match their hit total from the day before. Okay, go Tigers. We'll see y'all. Thank you for hanging out. Peace.